In this Retro Combs Fast Load, I open a box. Let's find out what's inside. I've been looking for a Commodore 128 to add to my retro collection and have been perusing eBay since the better part of a year trying to find the perfect Commodore 128. I found this Commodore 128, contacted the seller, negotiated a price, and while negotiating learned that he was actually a viewer of my YouTube channel. Thanks for watching, by the way. After the sale, this box appeared on my doorstep as we've started to open it up. If you'd like more information about my history with the Commodore 128, be sure to check out the companion blog post link below. You'll notice on top of the box that these RF and heat shields have a little bit of thermal, oh, I got a little thermal paste on my fingers, but these are not installed on the Commodore 128. That was listed in the sale. You'll find out why those aren't installed as we open up the Commodore 128 a bit later. Let's go ahead and clean up a little bit here, move these aside and dig a little deeper into the box to see what we have. I probably will come back to this RF shield. We'll probably go ahead and put that back on. You'll see why later. Opening up the box, removing the box, opening up the box, lots of stuff on the box. Let's go ahead and cut this. Oh man, this knife is dull as, now that's not a knife. This is a knife. There we go. Got my Swiss Army knife opening up the bubble rack that was protecting the Commodore 128 during shipment. Did a nice job. I have to really compliment the seller on the shipping of this Commodore 128. And it is a beauty. Look at this thing. It is clean, uh, dirt and dust free. It has the protective yellow tape on the ports. Let's go ahead and lay that down on the table. Let's go ahead and remove that yellow protective tape. Again, just a great job packing this up. Now, what I did notice is that the space bar was loose. Now, this is common with these Commodore computer. So you just need to line it up, press, click. There you go. And then it works just fine. Moving on, let's go ahead and take a look at the Commodore 128 and see what good shape it is in. As we come around to the back side, you'll notice the ports are dust free, clean, everything looks pristine. And as he advertised, this is almost a mint new in condition C128. Now this particular Commodore did not come with a power supply. The seller did offer to send an original for $50. However, I wanted a more modern power supply that I thought would better protect my purchase. So I went with the Keylog Commodore 128 with OLED screen and a touch sensitive button that it cycles through and lets you know what kind of power this device is sending to your Commodore computer. Most of the reviews online for this key log are fair to very good. I'm going to hope that it's going to be very good. Here's the little ad slick that's inside. They also sell power supplies for the Commodore 64 and 1541. As a matter of fact, they sell a combined power supply that will power both your 1541 and your C64, but they do not have that option for the Commodore 128. You'll see it has the familiar, not the barrel, but the square connector. It's a good looking device. The color, we'll compare that to our Commodore 128 here in a little bit later. It is a hefty device, looks good, and we've got some basic information on the back that provides the power we're supplying. Let's go ahead and hook up our brand new Commodore 128. Got the video plugged in, got the power plugged in. We're gonna plug it into the wall. Looks pretty good. The, the color is not the same color as the Commodore 128, although it is very close to the function keys. And I think it, supplements and fits nicely. And here's our touch screen display. You can see it's providing the power, how long the power is on. Let's go ahead and fire it up and see, uh-oh, what's going on? Oh, I just remembered I was messing around with keys. I had the 80 column mode pressed down. Let's turn it back on. There we go. Let's go ahead and do a quick program. Let's do our favorite retro combs program just to test, make sure everything's working. Keyboard feels great. Everything's working. Let's go ahead and test it in Commodore 64 mode. So we'll say go 64, hit enter. Let's do that same thing again. Just test C64 mode with our famous retro combs scrolling program. There we go. Everything's working just perfectly. Now, the next thing I wanted to do was plug in a game and plug in a joystick. So we're going to pull out Crazy Blaster from the future was 8-bit. We're going to plug it into the cartridge port. This will test the cartridge port. We'll also using this Hyperkin 
joy controller or this uh, ranger controller with a paddle controller uh, everything that you need again the links are in the companion blog post that worked perfectly fine now we're going to plug in our kung fu flash it boots in the c64 mode and everything seems to be working perfectly so let's go ahead and open it up and see what it looks like on the inside now we saw some pictures earlier from the ebay listing but let's make sure that what we saw earlier is actually what we received and it is as clean inside as the images portrayed on the ebay listing that was a nice surprise now we're going to go ahead and zoom in here and you'll see heat sinks on all of the processors and major components again those heat shields and rf shields were removed and we can't put those back on because those heat sinks are too tall now you could go, I guess, and cut the tops off and make them fit, but we're, we're not gonna do that. We're just gonna go ahead and leave those off. Now, I'm not too worried about the RF shielding, but I am gonna go ahead and put the RF shield back on the RF modulator just because I can, and I don't see any reason not to leave that off. And, you know, a little shielding on an RF modulator seems like a good idea to me. Not that I'll ever use this because we rarely use that. So you can see all of the components here and the connectors are in place, they're clean. We have our IEC, our display, our user port and our cartridge port. Everything is again, just clean and pristine and in excellent shape. Again, here's where the cartridge would go as we saw earlier in our test. Let's go ahead and zoom back out here. And then what I want to do is zoom in on this cape. There's a wire going across here. I have no earthly idea why that wire is there, but it is in permanently. I'm gonna have to research that. If you know what that's for, drop a comment in the comments below the companion webpage or below this video on YouTube. And let me know why that wire is there. I am gonna go research it. So eventually I will find out. But if somebody out there knows, please let me know. So let's go ahead and put the screws back on. Now, here's the only piece I have left over from a Commodore, my original Commodore 128. It's been since the 1980s since I held a Commodore 128 in my hand and I purchased this book. What, wait, what's this? Oh my gosh, it's some of my original Star Trek artwork that I created in GeoDraw on Geos and printed out on a Star Micronics, I think NX10. Oh my gosh, how much fun was that to find that in there? Well, okay, I can keep that out. But this Commodore 128 troubleshooting and repair manual was the only thing left over from my original Commodore 128. So I'll probably go ahead and take a look at that and start to learn more. So there is my Commodore 128 that I now have back in my possession. 30 plus years later, there is finally a Commodore 128 in my collection. There's a lot more to this story than what's shown in this video, so be sure and check out the companion blog post where you'll learn more about how I made this purchase, my history with the Commodore 128, and you'll find all of the links you need for everything I've mentioned. So for this fast load, Retro Combs out.